Tonight, Dory Old was a lonely, vulnerable 13-year-old when she was gang raped by a group of teenage boys. 38 years later, one of the boys who, who raped her popped up on her Facebook page under the People You May Know section. Whew! Wow. Well, what happened next, Dory bravely wrote about her experience in an incredibly moving piece for the New York Times. We saw the article, and we wanted to talk to her. She reminded me a little bit of Heidi Damon, if you remember her, the young lady that uh, addressed, so to speak, her attacker in court, the guy that had tried to rape and kill her. This, too, is an incredible story of facing your past, a story of strength and survival, and she is joining us now. Dory, thanks so much for being here. First, tell us about the story. It begins when you were a shy 13-year-old. You're desperate to be liked. You accept an invitation to meet up with older boys in a graveyard. Does that sort of set the scene? Yeah, that's about it. Uh, I wanted to fit in with this. It seemed like a hipper crowd. I was um, kind of nerdy. I was very studious. I got A's. Were these older so, kids? Uh, you were a 13-year-old. Thir yeah, well, the girls were in my grade, and some of the boys were older. And uh, it, was, it was a crowd of kids that just hung out. And um, one day... I, you know, I said hi, and, and they went out at night, and um, it just sounded fun. They invited me along. They said, do you want to, uh, one girl said, you know, we're going to the cemetery tonight. I said, isn't that spooky? And uh, she laughed, and she was so confident and so pretty, and I just, um, I, I just wanted to fit in like everybody else, you know. Most, most adults and you talk to, they say, I never fit in. You know, everybody felt like that, I think. And what went wrong? What happened there? Uh, well, everything went wrong. My two, the two girls, when they had boyfriends, I didn't. I was, you know, awkward, I guess, uh, nervous, shy. And uh, they went off to make out with their boyfriends. And so I was standing there feeling like a dork, you know. And, uh, and then... We'd all been drinking a little, smoking some pot, and it was the 70s. And uh, and then this guy who I thought was, the, he was the one who betrayed me the most. Uh, this was a guy who I thought was my friend, because we used to talk in school and laugh, and we knew some of the same kids. And he had a girlfriend who wasn't there that night, and he said, he motioned me over like, hey, come here, come here, I want a girl's opinion, I, I need a... Uh, I need your advice. So I felt great. Oh, you know, somebody noticed me. So I went over and he grabbed me. He clamped his hand over my mouth. Uh, he threw me down. He pinned me uh, with his knee into my hip bone. And I, for a minute, I thought, this is a joke. This is just boys, like, goofing around. But then it wasn't a joke. I mean, they didn't let up on my mouth. And they started laughing and, uh, and like, taking turns and... Uh, ripping at my clothes. I was a little girl. I, I didn't know what was going on. I had no idea. I was like completely out of my element and um, it, it was traumatizing. Of course. And, and I understand one of your messages is for victims to A, not blame themselves and B, speak up. And in your essay, I think it was in the essay, you said you almost talked to one of your teachers but eventually clammed up held it in, remained dysregulated and wounded, and then turned to drugs and alcohol, as so many do. That's, that's about right. Yeah, I had this one English teacher, Robin Disson. I loved her. She was great. I had her for creative writing, and uh, uh, I wanted to talk to her. But what, what stopped me from telling her, from telling my parents, uh, my sisters, I knew that something would be done, and those boys would get in trouble. And I was petrified that I would be unmercifully teased in school, bullied at school, because I would be, like, labeled a rat, a snitch. I was just petrified. You know, kids were cruel. They could be very cruel. And if you were insecure at all, you know, not my father, he, he used to say, well, just don't let it get to you. Um, you know, he said, have a poker face. But I just didn't know how. 
Well, and that, that was your version in that day and age of blaming the victim again. You assumed you would be the one to bear the responsibility. And it is a big deal. To, you know, you feel such shame as having been a victim that your shame then becomes an issue that is discussed out in the public. Let's say you had to testify against these boys. You have to revivify all those experiences. Now, I, I want to move past it a little bit to a line in your essay that really struck me. Towards the end of the essay, I think it was the end of the, of the essay, in fact, you said, quote, I wanted to hate him and hurt him, but realized that the only way to be free was to let it all go. When I defriended him, that's your Facebook, I felt strong. The past was the past, and my mouth wasn't covered anymore. Tell me about that, because originally you, he popped up, you wanted to get him, and you found, should we call it a more spiritual solution? Well, I wrote him a long note. Uh, I was shocked to see his face. It made me feel sick. Um, and then, you know, I thought, should I friend him? You know, I, I could have just sent a, uh, a, a message, but I don't know. I, I, uh, I guess curiosity. And so I friended him, and he, he accepted the friendship right away. And I was so disturbed. Like, I thought, does he even remember? Do, do, do these boys know what it, it did to my psyche? And they probably forgot all about it, which uh, had haunted me. And um, so I wrote him a note, and I, um, I looked through, as soon as he accepted, I looked through his photos, and I saw he had a pretty teenage daughter. And I wrote, um, you know, you better keep your daughter safe from guys like you. And that made me feel better because I was putting... Like, I was a person. I felt like they had not seen me as a person. They were having fun with mm -hmm. me and uh, mean. And I don't think they put it, like one of the boys said, man, she has an ugly face, but she sure has a nice body. And uh, I think, like, I didn't have an ugly face, but, you know, I was a young girl. So I thought, oh, I must have an ugly face, you know, but I, I it's... And I think maybe they were trying to um, dehumanize me, you know, by saying yes. that. Um, yes, but it was course. very confusing because I was adolescent, so I thought, oh, I have a nice body. It, and, it was and, such and a Dory, mind. Uh, yeah, yeah, don't use don't use a bad word because that's what kind of mind thing it was. But I want to I want to tell you we're gonna you're gonna stay with us, and I want to point out to people that the picture that has been playing alongside of you as a little girl that's you the year you were raped. I mean that's how much of a little girl you were.